what's up everyone welcome back to the channel in today's video i'm going to be responding to another question that was left in um the comment section on the community tab the question is how to manage time on the first day on the floor yeah how to manage time on your first day on the floor all right so if you're new here please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when i do post a new video Give this video a big thumbs up and if you haven't already checked out the videos before please go ahead and do so and please you guys make sure you're watching the ads please so youtube can give me my coins make sure you're liking these videos so um more people will be drawn to the channel i'll get more subscribers i get more attention and you know it's up so um yeah make sure you guys are doing that please and thank you and let's go ahead and get into the video I just have a y'all know a few things wrote down here so I'm just gonna start with let's see time management as a new nurse let's see so first thing first y'all know I'm always gonna say always 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 arrive to work on time is essential you have to arrive to work on time now when I say arrive to work on time if your shift starts at 7 o'clock I'm not saying be there at 7 o'clock be there at 6 45 okay so when you get to work go ahead now you might not know um the staff members you might not know how they work or, or nothing like that yet but check the schedule and at least see how many cnas you have you're not going to know who if you have good cnas or not but at, at least see how many you would have so if you're working on a hall by yourself and you have let's just say 25 residents or 30 residents and let's say you have three CNAs you can work with that that's good you know you'll have some help if you have two CNAs and one is going to be late you'll know what you need to do you'll know how to organize and schedule your stuff if you have one CNA and they trying to find somebody like you need to know how many CNAs you're going to have because that is your help. Because if they're not there, then you're going to have to start feeding. You're going to have to start passing out trays. Um, you're going to have to start doing all of the things, getting people dressed, all the stuff that they do. You're going to have to do it. So it's good to know how many CNAs you're going to have. So just kind of look over the schedule and see. Now, where I used to work at, we had to make the schedule, give the um, CNAs assignments, but I don't think they'll have you doing it um, with, your, with it being your first day. So, don't worry about that right now, but eventually you'll have to do that. And I think, like, the unit manager will be doing things like this. So, they'll let you know. They'll kind of help you out. Um, after you check the schedule out, do your walking rounds. Go ahead and walk around and see um, if everybody's alive, um, <laughs> if they have an oxygen tank in there and it's not on make sure you know you have that put on make sure their pumps are running just go around and just do a thorough check and really make sure everyone is alive because um you don't want to give report if somebody is in there you want that nurse to handle that before they leave so definitely do your walk arounds before you get um report or any of that um so the next thing i would go ahead and get report and while you're getting report you're going to ask about um everything this is your first time on the floor by yourself make sure they tell you who um is a blood sugar check make sure they tell you who is on dialysis if they're going to dialysis uh you know make sure they just give you all the good information that you need let let you know if they are whole or crushed let you know if they refuse their medication all the time so you can know who you need to be working on first and who you need to wait to last um and certain people, they'll tell you, crush with pudding, crush with applesauce. They like the med pads, that, which is the little nutritional drink that they have. They'll let you know all that stuff so you can be prepared to have it on the cart. So, um, also ask about if you have anybody that's going to be receiving labs. Should I be looking out for labs to be coming in? Um, should I be looking out for the doctor or the nurse practitioner to come in? Any procedures that have to be performed on that day? any appointments, any admissions, or anybody that is acute. Make sure they give you all that information because it's going to help you so you won't be scrambling. You don't you don't want to have um, things that just pop up out of the blue that you're unaware of 
if the nurse before could have told you because they already know. So make sure you get all of the information and have it down pat. And this is just going to help you so um, you won't have no surprises. And this is help you so you can manage everything, manage that time and have everything wrote down so you will know what your day looks like. Um, now after I've gotten report, I would go ahead and make sure I have everything on stocked on the cart. Now, um, being new, some stuff you're not going to know, but make sure you have, you know, the essential things like Tylenol, Claritin, uh, aspirin, you know, just the regular regular stuff. Now, the nurse before should already get your water, your spoons, your cups, empty their trash. Um, but you, you need to get pudding, applesauce, um, any type of special things that you think you'll need or that they've already told you um, in a report. Make sure you have all of that on there. Make sure you have your pens, your markers, your uh, blood pressure cuff, your O2, your temp pro, everything. So you won't be running back and forth. Um, if you have somebody that's on um, G-Tube and you know you've looked and seen what type of uh, supplements they take, make sure you go ahead and get that and kind of put it on the cart with the tubing and everything. That way you won't have to keep running back and forth. So if you already know this stuff, and you should know if you did the walk around, go ahead and look at their milk and stuff and see if it's full or empty. If you see that you got to change it, go ahead and put it on the cart. So, like I said, when you get to their room, you don't have to run back to the um, nurse station to get anything. You already have it. Now, after I've stopped my car and make sure I have everything, I'll go ahead and sit down and write down treatments. Um, look at, go to the treatment tab and see who all you have to do treatments for. And this is only if you don't have a treatment nurse. If you have a treatment nurse, perfect. Or if the um, wound doctors come in that day, you usually don't have to do those treatments. So... That's a plus for those days. But if not, sit down and write down the treatments. So you're going to write down the room number. You're going to write down where their wounds are, what side they're on, what you need to do that treatment. And this is something you're going to need um, later on. But you will go ahead and while you have downtime. So Because when, when you first get to work, if you arrive at 645, you'll have time to do this before the trays come before it's time to pass medication. So you can go ahead and just write that down. Um, and just get write down everything that you need. So when it's time to do the treatments, all you got to do is roll the treatment card with your notepad. And it's very, very beneficial if you have something like this or something like this that you can work with. Um, and I will use like a special color to write down the treatments um, on your report sheet. If you know they, they have to get a treatment done, like put a little circle or check or TX beside it so you'll know that you need to be looking forward to doing a treatment for them. I don't even know what I wrote right here. Okay, anyways, next, um, it's, it's going to be time to give your meds now. Now, I would start based off the meal trays when they come. That's how I do it. Now, if you have somebody that's on, on the feeding, they have a G2, go ahead and do them first because that's their food. You can go ahead and give them their medicine, go ahead and set their milk up and do all that, get them out of the way. So you ain't got to worry about them. Those are the easy ones. So by the time you do that, uh, the CNA, the A's should be then past some of the trays. And they should have ate a little bit by then. So go and start where they started at and start giving your medications. And I like to do it that way because the CNA's and already got them up. And um, they've already then interrupted them, made them mad, they got all that out of the way by waking them up. So all you got to do is say, hey, good morning, such and such. I have your medication. You want to go ahead and take it um, right now? And usually they go ahead and take it. Um, and if it's crushed, go ahead and try to get in there with them while they're eating. Get it down so they can drink them a little juice. Um, but make sure you're, you know, following protocol. 
and some people you have to you know crush it up and put it in a little beverage a little juice a little milk so yeah make sure you are trying to get all this stuff out of the way while they um, have their breakfast tray or lunch tray or whatever the case may be whatever tray it is whether it's three to eleven shift seven to three shift just try to work with the CNAs and the trays because normally that be around the time that the mid pass it, it kind of go hand in hand the meal trays and the mid pass sometimes they kind of work out together most of the times I work they work out together um so yeah like I said go ahead and get the G2s out the way um and then before you um before you start with the mid pass when you um after you get up from right now the treatments and still kind of run around and make sure the CNAs have the residents ready to eat. Make sure if they have, it's a lot y'all. I feel like I'm saying a lot. But if they have dentures or something, make sure they have dentures. Make sure they're sitting up. Make sure they're comfortable. Make sure their bedside table is close by and clean. And and this is just things you can delegate and make sure they're doing that. That's another thing um, that, and that goes with the video I made before about delegating. I'm going to link it if you haven't seen it. But delegate things like that. Make sure they're sitting up. Make sure they have their dentures. Make sure their mouth is clean. Make sure they have their um bedside table. Make sure they have the water or whatever the case may be. Make sure they have the things that they need so they can, you know, have a successful breakfast, breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever. Um, and while you're giving your meds, kind of do the people that you think is going to be hard for you. Like I said, doing report, you're going to ask. If you got somebody that's already refusing, you might want to do them last or you want, might want to try to do them first. Um, if you got somebody that's easy peasy with taking their medicine, you might want to do them last and, you know, go ahead and try to do the hard people first. And when I say hard, sometimes it's not always about refusing. Um, some of them might want to take 10 pills. I mean, have to take 10 pills and they want to take them all one at a time. So you might want to go ahead and get them out the way. Uh, or somebody that wants you to explain everything to them over and over. Make sure you try to go ahead and get them out the way as well. So you just have to know the residents. And you'll know by asking and report. You're not going to know like everything right off. But if you kind of ask these type of questions, you'll know a little bit until you get comfortable. And after you've done your medication and everything, all that's out the way, the trays are picked up. You can sit down and do some documentation. Now you can do try to do all your documentation or you can do half of it now and you can do half of it later. But um now is a good time to kind of try to sit down and document it after that kind of take you like a 15 minute breather, 15 minute break, get you some water or a snack or something like that. After you've done your 15 minute break or um whatever you decided to do, just take a breather. I would want to try to start to check on, I mean, work on my treatments. Because around this time, the CNAs are doing their rounds probably after they took their break. And you guys can go in together. So if you have a treatment that's really hard, they can help you. Or if it's one really easy, they can help you. And if it's something like, this is another thing that I would delegate. You have to do skin preps. So many skin preps, y'all, because, you know, they're prone to get uh bed sores pressure ulcers and stuff like that on their heels um and wherever they have bony premises that that they're laying down all the time they want to do skin preps i would kind of delegate that to the um cnas and they'll just go in and after they wipe them up they'll rub it on their heels and stuff that's easy stuff for them to do and you just you know you know make sure they did it and that's it so i'll delegate things like that but like i said during this time i'll get the treatment card take the notebook that i wrote everything down on and um take it with me and I'll take my laptop too in case I have um, something else that I need to look up but um, definitely go and try to tag team this with your CNA so you can go ahead and get it done and, but it's really good if you have a treatment nurse that that's really great but in the case that you don't just work hand in hand with your CNA you know build that relationship with them y'all work together and get the job done uh, and after that, you should have time to take you a break. So um, just make sure everybody is okay. Make sure the residents okay and the CNA is okay after you've done those treatments. And um, you can either take your lunch now, your 30 minutes. You can either finish charting 
Um, if you got labs or need to put in any type of orders, you can go ahead and get that stuff done. You can, like I said, you can take the break now after you've done the treatments, or you can finish charting, handling your labs or orders or anything that you had already wrote down from earlier from getting report. You can handle those things or take lunch. Um, and then after you come back from lunch, you're gonna you're not gonna have too much time left, so you can either um. No, not either. You're going to have to finish up those last few meds that you have. Now, if you're on a day shift, um, you have meds that's due around 1, 12, 1, 2, stuff like that. Go ahead and get those out the way. Um, and then normally, it's not too many. If you're on a 3 to 11 shift, you have some that's due around uh, 7, 8. Go ahead and get those. Um, not 7, 8. Like, not 7, 8, y'all. I'm sorry like um around nine ish something like that people that like to take certain things at night they'll have it scheduled later you can go ahead and knock those out the way um anything that popped up popped up during the day unexpected go ahead and knock that th those things out do your udas which is part of your documentation go ahead and get that stuff done um ask the aides if they need any type of help Around this time, you're just winding down. After lunch, you're you're kind of winding down and getting all the little ends and out, uh, the odds and ends out the way. So, um, like I said, finish any medications you have to do, finish any chart and anything that popped up. Like, um, for instance, if you had somebody to, um, uh, let's see had to go out to the um, hospital or somebody that fell or something like that and you wasn't able to finish doing like the charting uh, you go ahead and open it up but you can finish doing it at this time but definitely go ahead and open it up at the time that it happens so that time stamp will be there and it won't be like you did a late entry so um and that's another thing I'd probably do a video on that another day but that's a whole nother topic in itself And that's about it, cause by this by this time your shift is about over. You don't you don't have anything else to do after you've done that last medication pass, but document and finish up anything that you weren't able to finish up during the shift, like anything that just unexpectedly happened. Um, but definitely see if you can help your aides out at this time. See if they need help putting anybody to bed. Um, uh, if they're having a hard time with a resident, just see if they need some help. Cause they are the best, y'all. The CNA, especially when you got CNA that's on their stuff, know their residents. They probably won't even bother you. They'll be asking you if you need some help with something. Are you okay? Things like that. If you are nice and you build, you build that rapport with your CNA, they will definitely check on you. They'll make sure you're okay. I'm telling you, I love, love, love my CNAs. I'm telling you, cause they are the bomb, especially when they come in there and they doing what they gotta do. I love it. I love it. But um, that is all, you guys, on this video. Once you know, I always say I hope it was helpful. I try to lay out everything in the way that I would do. I try to take it out of my head and put it on paper and give it to y'all. So yeah, I hope it's helpful. Um, please, 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 y'all, give these videos like I have like um. 200 views and I only have like 12 13 likes so it's not adding up so um please go ahead and like the videos subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell make sure it's turned to all so you get all the notification please make sure you are watching the ads you guys because like I said once again I need YouTube to pay me my money um and yeah y'all just continue to rock out continue to be great and do your thing okay use these tips they're going to help you out i hope you guys took plenty of notes um and i love you guys i'll see you in the next video